Hey everybody, welcome to Paranormal Zone TV. I want to thank you all so much for being here tonight. And um, for those who, you, who may be new to the show, if you would please subscribe, uh, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, tonight we have a really great guest and I'm so excited to have him on, Lee uh, Hemmel. Hempel? Hempel. Hempel. Uh, he is a retired math and physics teacher from Illinois and the owner of a mysterious 35-acre hayfield along Bray Road near Acorn, Wisconsin. His experiences and research were featured in Linda Godfrey's book, Monsters Among Us, and in the Small Town Monsters production, The Bray Road Beast. Over the years, Lee has conducted further research on his farm in an effort to discover more evidence related to the Beast of Bray Road. So with that, let's bring Lee on. Hey Lee, thanks for coming on the show. I'm so excited hey. to have you. I can't wait to hear your story. Thank and for you so much you to, for having me. Oh gosh. Um, the viewers are going to love your story. I mean, we talked, uh, what was it, yesterday, the other day, and it was, oh my gosh. You have so much to offer, and and in ex the experiences that you've had with the real creature is unbelievable. So let me start asking you some questions, okay? We have a lot of pictures to show you, and uh, Lee is, will um, explain to you E about each of these pictures we have them in a collage and um, he'll tell you all the experiences and what he has felt during this whole during these whole experiences because this creature visits him often so Lee um, for the viewers I want to tell you that um, um, I lost it okay so the earliest report incident in the Wisconsin uh, of this um, dog man happened in 1936 outside of Jefferson, Wisconsin. So the sightings from 1936. All right, so Lee, tell us about your hay field. Why did you buy it? And were you aware of the Beast of Bray Road? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. And thank, thanks for all the viewers that are viewing. Thank you very much. Um, why did I buy the property? Or um, I, I live in Wakanda, Illinois, at 35 miles from Elkhorn, Wisconsin. And I was a math teacher here, actually a math computer science teacher for 35 years. I retired in 2000. I, my wife and I, at that time, had a boarding, uh, horse boarding operation and a, a riding academy. And I was bailing hay uh, in the early 2000s at my mother's property. and. I knew that there would be you know, a time when that would end. And she sold some farmland and, and my brother Fred said, why don't you buy, well, why don't we get the 35 acres and you know, rest in peace, my mom passed away in 2010. And then you will have land to, to bale hay on for your horse boarding and horse riding academy operation. We actually had 42 horses here in Wakanda, uh, 20 of ours and 22 boarders. So that's what I did. So I started looking uh, around southern Wisconsin, and this property I found uh, over by Elkhorn, uh, and, and we purchased it in 2007. Uh, I did not farm there until 2011. I had a neighbor farm the property farmed it on shares, and so I didn't farm until 2011. And 2011, I started farming it, and I farmed in 2011, 12, and 13, knowing nothing about the beast of Bray Road. Never, no indication. Well, my youngest son said there was a guy in the, uh, in the Navy, he served in the Navy, and he said there was a guy in the Navy that had talked to him about uh, uh, this style from Wisconsin and he mentioned that to me and I said oh sure when I see this thing I'll let you know but I no knowledge no knowledge of these in September of 2013 I cut hay and I made a bad mistake Wisconsin when the Packers play you can get no help to bail hay <laughs> I, I had young men helping me and it was on a Sunday I needed to bail and they said, oh, no, no, the bears are playing the background. Oh, we can't help. So I had to bail the hay. So I was going to go up and drop the hay on the ground. In that process, 
I was driving by my neighbors and two of the neighbors were standing out in the yard. I said, I pulled in, I said, hey, what are you guys doing? And they said, oh, nothing, we're just hanging around. I said, would you load hay? They will hay for me. It was, oh yeah, we'll come down, we'll load it for you. So we, they came down and I bought them a case of, of beer and you know, we're in Wisconsin <laughs> and, and that's what they said they wanted. But we finished bailing the hay in a couple, three hours and we were standing at the end of my shed facing west looking out at my property and they were having their beers there and one of them said at that point you know the werewolf lives back on your property and i go what are you ta- what are you talking about what, what are you ta- what are you talking about you, you don't want to hear that you know the werewolf lives back on your property <laughs> so, oh my goodness <laughs> So I accused him of having brown eyes, but uh, he's so full of it. But uh, he's no, no. He started telling about all these farmers that this guy saw it on Bray Road and this lady saw it on Bowers Road. Which I my farm is in between Bray Road and Bowers Road, uh, and I'm a quarter mile from Bray Road and actually I front on Bowers Road, but I'm a quarter mile from Bray Road. They started telling about all these farmers, and I knew them by now. And I said, "What are you talking about?" And he's, and he's "Well, this is it. No, it's been here, and people have seen it, and and uh, you know, for over the years, and and uh, and so I started. Okay, I'll look into this, you know. And now, ten to eleven years later, I'm telling you, there's a six and a half to seven foot tall creature that appears to be a upright dog man on walking around my property. Oh my god. Why do you think he visits your your uh your your field, your 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 farm? Because he's he he's continually having these visits with you. Why? Why you? Well, that's a good question because <laughs> a good question. <laughs> because I have no interest in in script. I had heard of Bigfoot but I kind of dismissed it, you know, I, I had not had any really interest in it. And so, skeptic, sure, I, I thought probably there were hoaxes and, and things at this point that, that occurred in, in the Bigfoot. I had never heard of the dog man before. But, you know, when, when God says, okay, this is now for something for you to, you know, here it is, it's on your plate now, what are you gonna do with it? And that's what happened. It, it, things started happening once I started putting out uh, roadkill raccoon, roadkill deer, cameras. I've had one to five cameras on my property for the last uh, 10 and a half years now. I have over 100,000 pictures on my computer of paranormal, paranormal pictures. And the activity and the, and the, the occurrences of what has happened on that hayfield in the last ten and a half years is is unreal. I mean, it's just not. It's just not. It's, it's unnatural. Very, very unnatural. And, and many of the occurrences have not been, uh, you know, occurrences that I would have ever heard of. And you know, I, I grew up on a farm in northern Illinois, and I had hunted a lot, been out outdoors a lot, and I knew things were not right. I knew this. Okay, this is not. You know, I can't have these tracks. Oh, the tracks. You want to show the pictures of the tracks? Well, um, what I was going to do was I'm going to show them the picture of the deer that you uh, sent to me. Do you want to talk about that picture of the deer? I looked, I don't know. Is that a body or a leg or what is that? There was the mutilated deer. Yeah, yeah. Sure, put it on. I got it, yeah. Sure. Okay, the mutilated deer, that's, that's number six. Yes. Okay. Number six. Can you zoom in on, on that deer? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Yeah. No. I can do the whole uh, screen. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll talk. I'll, the, the, maybe we can zoom in. I'll talk about it. Okay. Oh. I put up 20 deer, roadkill deer, from September of 2013 until... June of 2016. And the deer were, 18 of them were carried away. And, and a coyote 
40 you can't carry away a deer the, the only pre- predator animal we have in, in that area is coyotes uh, I've caught no wolves on my cameras which, which have been out for 10 years I've, I've caught no bear no cougar anything like that and coyotes cannot carry away a deer yet 150 pound deer were picked up and carried away well before they were carried away many of them were mutilated and with that I mean you know the front quarter in this case the front quarter this deer was carried about 10 feet and thrown between these two trees the two trees are a foot apart you can see the head in the back and you can see the the right front leg down below and a coyote cannot do that plus a coyote they the coyotes did eat on some of the deer and they would eat the back quarter because that's the best meat now if you look at this here the front right quarter has been cut off and carried away oh so that's what that is i yeah. i haven't if even you, if you yeah. if you zoom in on the, on the cut part you can see that this was cut with a, a sharp object and the beast did that yes it, it did this in front of a working game camera that I have I, every one of the deer had game cameras on them. and uh, I should have dozens and dozens of pictures of the beast itself I've seen it three times with my own eyes, but I should have dozens and dozens of pictures on of the beast, and I do have some. But uh, the the beast did that, yes. Wow. He would, or he would pick up the whole deer, and that deer eventually was picked up and carried away three days or five, five days later. Wow. Okay. Um, all right, let me go back now to what I wanted to ask you. All right, so, um, so do you believe then that this beast is either an, is an a real animal or do you believe it to be supernatural? Well, let's go to the tracks, can we? Can we go to one, two, and thirteen pictures? All right, hold on. Let me go to that. And I think I think that that's you that want the question. That, Okay, one, two, and thirteen. Okay, got it. One, two, and thirteen. Got it. Okay. Yeah, the five toes and seven pads. Yeah, can you zoom zoom in on number one? Um. Uh, which one is number one? I have this in a collage. Is it the one with the 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 smallest one with the branches and the five? Looks like the five toes. It's got some green in it. Yeah, hold on. I yeah. Think, yeah, I think I know which one it is. All right, let me see if I can zoom in on this. Yeah, so people can yeah, see the you five. Can, okay. Oh, yeah. There you, yeah, it's like they're punched out. I mean, it's they're big. This track is three inches by three and a half inches. Wow. Yeah, you can definitely see it. And it's not a double hit. I've seen this track hundreds and hundreds of times. I counted up today 14 people who over the 10 years have, have has come and you know visited or you know wanted, wanted to look at my field 14 people have seen this track five toed seven pad canid track because you can see the toenails wow so it's not feline it's canid wow I love- and there's no animal in the world that has that track I, uh, my brother Fred, I sent this track. We, the Natural History Museum in Chicago, sent him a name to a gentleman in Utah. I think Utah or, or Nevada, but it was a tra- their track expert, and he said it was a double hit, but not by the same animal. He said another animal crossed it. Well, I've tracked this track a hundred, you know, a half mile, hundreds of times. So it it has that foot. Wow. Now, all right. A natural, an animal makes a track. That's facts. Okay. Track is facts. So, is this animal creature walking in 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 this dirt? Yes, absolutely. Is he leaving tracks? Absolutely. Now, sometimes though, the tracks just are going along, like in snow or even in dirt, 
you know, good, good uh, muddy dirt, and they just stop. There are no more tracks. There are no more tracks. They just stop. Now, a natural animal cannot be walking along and simply disappear. Does that make it supernatural? Yes. Okay, Is Lee. Is it natural and supernatural? Yes. I'm showing the other one, the, the one on the bottom. Oh, I don't know which picture it is, but it's the one that uh, is in, in the dirt. That uh, You have a tape measure. It's that one. Because okay. that's that, really that's, clear. Pardon? That's really clear. Yeah, okay. That, uh, I just to show, because people say, oh, there's only one track. Well, I've tracked it half a mile. I've tracked it, you know, half mile or more many times and so this is one step and then if you look at it I I just have this little picture here if you zoom in I think it's around 24 inch step uh, yeah when you zoom in the um, the um, tape measure is blurry okay but, but it looks shows, like that shows a, yeah, a track ahead. line yeah oh no that it's clear a track line clear clear as day and then I have yeah. the other one that looks I don't know it looks like a wet spot in dirt but that, I'm assuming that's one of the yeah. footprints yeah if you zoom in that's got five toes and seven pad the heel pad is not as pronounced in that one as the other one and that that's not unusual sometimes he walks more on his toes but but it's still a five toed seven pad track and it shows it's not a double hip Wow. Okay. And the uh, and the, and the one with the tape measure yeah. shows that it's a track line, and he's taken a twenty-four inch step. Well, there's no a county takes about a twelve inch step, and, and it also shows that it's bipedal. Wow. All right. And you caught you captured that from what your field camera? No, those are pictures that I have taken. Oh, you. Okay, I. All three of those pictures were taken with my smartphone. Okay, so what? What did you walked around your farm, and that's what you found? Oh, every every yeah, ninety yeah. percent of the time I go out to look for tracks, I find tracks. Okay. Uh, of, of this five toed seven pet, and there's actually four other type of creature tracks. There's actually five different creatures tracks on my property. This one is the most. Uh, pronounced one the most common one. Okay. Um, uh, what time of the day do they usually visit you? Is it mornings, afternoons, twilight, dawn? What, is there a particular time of day? Mm, no, not really. I mean, the ones that I've captured on my camera have been anywhere from, you know, morning, afternoon. I, my personal sightings have been from, uh, I saw it twi at 10.30 on May 5th, 2017, and I saw it at 3.30 in the afternoon on May 11th, 2021, and I saw it at 10.30 at night on May 20th, 2023. Hmm. I, and, and, let's, okay, May 5th, 2017, I pulled out of my, my driveway uh, to go into Lake Geneva and at 10 30 at night and when I turned on the road which is Bowers Road that runs parallel to Bray Road about three quarters of a mile away and there was two luminous red eyes next to the road about three feet off the road and right away I knew okay I'm not looking at a coyote I'm not looking at a deer coyotes and deers have yellow yet to yellowish green eyes so I knew right away the luminous red eyes I'm looking at the beast of Bray Road well then it went down the embankment and that embankment was four and a half feet deep and May 5th the, the grass on top was a foot tall and it's looking over the top at me with these very luminous red eyes mm -hmm. orangey red eyes that makes the eyes at least Six six and a half feet tall. Oh my God! And he's looking at me over the top of the an embankment. I've measured it's four and a half feet, 
and the grass was a foot tall on top. So he's that's five and a half feet, and he's looking over the top at me. And you're looking right back at him. Well, I'm driving my truck. I throw my brights on because, I mean, this was, you know, within, he was uh, two electrical poles away, so about 200 feet oh. when I first saw him. And then as I, as I threw my brights on and accelerated, then he turned, he was down the ditch, down the embankment, down the ditch, and instantaneously, I mean, so fast, he was 15 to 20 feet out in the field. He turned, and I saw one red eye again. Again, the luminosity was similar to when he was up by the road, so it's not a reflection. Then, instantaneously, he's another 15 to 20 feet out of my field. And, mm. I mean, here's a, and I only saw one red eye both of those times. So, I go, okay, I, I, okay, I just saw the beast of Bray Road, there's no question. And the funny part was, I, I should have been able to see body. Well, there are a lot of funny parts about it, but I should have been able to see body. I could not see any body. And the next morning, our youngest son came up. <clears throat> Actually, I became very ill that evening. And uh, that's another story. But uh, I said, let's go look for the track. So we went down, and I knew right where the track, right where I'd seen the creature. And we went uh, into the field, like three, four feet. And here were the five-toed, seven-pad tracks. And I have pictures of them. The five-toed, seven-pad tracks were in that field, right where I had seen the creature. Wow. So I know I saw. There was the only tracks there. There was no other tracks there, no bear tracks or anything. Plus, a bear can't jump 15, 20 feet and, and, you know, two, on two legs and be bipedal and then jump another 15, 20 feet. The, the, I did not find, we could not find where, where it landed. You know, that was, there was a lot of debris. It was in a cornfield, a previous cornfield, and there was a lot of debris. We could not find where it landed. But right next to the right next to the road, right into the field, there was a five-toed seven pad tracks. So you said you got ill that night. How did, was it because of the creature? Well, <laughs> uh, I checked, I became very ill that night. I had diarrhea, and vomiting. Um, and, and I went back to, I had eaten in a restaurant in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. I went back there and I said, the only thing I could think of, because the next morning, I mean, to finish the story, uh, the next morning, my brother Fred tried to call me, because I came back that evening, after right right away after I saw it, and pulled in my shed, and I had to call somebody. I wanted to tell somebody right away. And so I called my brother Fred, who's been very helpful in this whole endeavor, and told him the story about you know, the red eyes and what had happened. And he called me the next morning and I didn't answer because I was not feeling well at all. And so he, that's when my, my youngest son came up and to see if I was okay. But I had checked with this restaurant and I said, did you have any food poisoning mm -hmm. the, previous night, the previous night? And they said, well, no, not that we know of, no. I said, okay. So, that, you know, by noon I was okay. So. I don't know what it was. I don't. I don't have any concept of what it could have been, other than that I I was in contact or close proximity with the beast of Bray Road. Was that the closest you ever you have ever been with the beast? Well, knowingly, <laughs> he's 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 <laughs> knowingly, but he he's been right next to my truck, growling at me, and uh, you know. At night, he, he, uh, you know. Okay, wait I a minute. See. Wait a minute. You mean he was? Were you in the truck when he was next to you in the in the? In, was he next to you while you were in the truck, growling at yes. you? Yes. Yes. So he, growling at me. Yes. So yes. you you got a really close hand look at him. I did not see him. He, I I think he stayed down below. Uh, the the you know the window line. Really? I didn't. I didn't see him that night, but he was. But he was he growling. Oh, okay. I could, hear, I could hear. I could hear the hay rustling, and then he grunted and growled at me as he went by my truck. 
and and also he hit my truck with a stick one one at one evening at seven thirty at night. Uh, it was actually uh, just getting dusk, and, and I, I my truck got hit with a stick. I was driving along my fence line near the woods right there. Suddenly, pow! And I I knew my truck was hit with a stick, so I immediately backed up, and there was nothing there. But there in front of my truck was a foot long stick laying in my hay field that had just been broken into that dimension, wow. to that lane. And I had a big scratch in my truck. So uh, I, I think he play, he, he plays games. He, I walk away from my camera and, and I'll come back and it's all twisted out of shape, like 15 minutes. Wow. Later, he, he, he plays games. Now, I'm sure you've investigated or researched other stories of people who have seen this Bray Road monster and heard their stories. Ha have any of them no, mentioned? No, no, you, ha I'm you, not, no. you haven't heard of anybody. I'm not. I, no, I'm not investigating anybody's stories. Okay. I so, concentrate on my property, and some people told me stories, but. Uh, but I, 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 I'm just, I'm so involved with trying experiments, repeatable experiments from a scientific point of view. I try to do repeatable experiments and I have done many, many of them. Uh, and so uh, that's really been my focus. Uh, other people have wanted to tell me stories and certainly I said this to their, their stories and they're very interesting stories, absolutely. And they're my neighbors. So. So, are so you, your neighbors have seen them as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, does everybody? All, all, all of them. I mean, most of them, one, yes, all of them have seen it over the last 15, 20, 30 years, yes. Are you the only, well, your acres, you have 35 acres. Are all the, um, the land where you are, are they all farms and large farms like yours? It's all farmland. Yeah, it's a, it's a farmland, and most of the, the 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 land is you know thirty five to eighty acres, and you know, uh, and that's that's what it was divided up into uh, when you know Wisconsin became a state. They divided it up into eighty acre plots, and so people have purchased one, two, three, four, five of them. So uh, yeah, so that, it's all farmland, uh, and you know, and like my one neighbor, he was. I'll, I'll tell you one neighbor's story and he was out um, working on he was in the shed at 4.30 in the morning 3.30 in the morning I'm sorry working in the shed uh, he is a farmer but he also is a landscaper and he does snow plowing and he was working on his salt spreader suddenly his uh, donkeys began braying very loudly and he walked outside of his, his uh, shop he was working on the salt spreader and and he looked and here come a coyote running down his driveway. Now he has a lot of equipment there, so he has a lot of bright lights. And here comes a coyote running down his driveway towards his shop. And and he said, what's a coyote running for? You know, Well, right behind it was the, the creature, the beast, was, you know, six, seven feet tall, running right behind it on two legs, uh, you know, uh, chasing the coyote, and it ran within 30 feet of it. Wow. So it's fast. Uh, does oh, it's really fast. Really fast. Does any of your neighbors, um, do they do what you do? They put field cameras out on their land to see if they can capture it as well? No, no, but no. No. no they won't even talk about it. Uh, most of them will not. Uh, some of them told me in private, like this gentleman told me in private. So uh, they won't talk. It's very difficult to get people even talk about it and Linda Godfrey in her books interviewed as many people as she could and she got some people to talk about it but I know many farmers you know well five five or six farmers who will not talk about it at all and they've seen it and they don't want to talk about it they don't want it to have the um, I guess the ridicule mm -hmm. um, uh, no nobody that I know of nobody in that area I don't know about the rest of the world but you know, I have, like I say, over 100,000 pictures on my computer, and most of them have paranormal activity in them, lights, 
paranormal mist. Uh, you know, they're unknown. I guess they're unknown. Uh, you know, shafts of light. Uh, you know. Uh, well, we'll get into those other pictures. Lots of stuff. Uh, um, are, are all these all these plots of land? Are they farming land? Are they hay fields like you? What what kind of farming are they doing? Um, cattle, maybe. Maybe that's why the um, the uh, beast hangs around. There might be cattle and food for it to eat. Well, it's never. <clears throat> I only know of one farmer who who has pigs. It did uh, harm some of his pigs, and that was in the 80s. But uh, his farmland is in southern Wisconsin is mainly corn, soybeans, and hay. That's, that's your three crops that are the most common in, in, in the area in southern Wisconsin. Corn, soybeans, and hay. Okay, so and, if there's... And so nothing unusual about my hay field. So um, nobody raises cattle or... Um, oh, yes, sure. oh, oh yes. so there is cattle. Have any of oh, them, yeah. any of the farmers there, um, um, talked about animals being mutilated? No, no really? only, only the one farmer I talked to or told me that their pigs were uh, the skin. That they were feeder pigs, so they'd be fifty pounds to two hundred pounds, and and at various times. The skin on their back would be as it had been, he said, sliced, you know, three or four inches apart and the skin was flopping around on their backs. He said that occurred several times with their pigs. That's the only domestic animal that I've ever heard of that's had any type of activity by an unknown concept. I mean, a coyote can't do that. A coyote only weighs, you know, yeah. a coyote's like a big fox. Yeah. You know, People, yeah, people are going the wolves, but they're much. Yeah, that's what they look like. They look like the they coyote. Yeah. Well, then I wonder what. Okay, so how is is there abundance of deer in your area? Oh sure, there's oh, a lot okay. of deer, but they're eating I something. I mean, I mean, it would like that deer that. You, you have, I don't know if you still have the picture. Yeah, I have it. That deer was stayed there for nine days and he moved it around right in front of a working camera, but there was a black mist that came. We can talk about that. Uh, but yeah, let's go to that uh, next. You should have... Um, the paramist? Yeah, let's do the paramist. Okay, the paramist. Four and five. Okay, let me get rid of this. Hold on. All right, paramist. All right, here's the paramist. Got it. Okay, let's look at the one that has the black mist in it. Do you want me to enlarge it? Sure. All right, let me enlarge that one. Whoops, come on. All right, I'll enlarge that one. Okay, I got that one enlarged. Okay, that, if you look in the background, you can see Who's, a deer leg sticking up. Uh, I, it looks like a person. Well, there's a deer leg sticking up from, that. that is the camera it was on that deer that had the front quarter, that had been, Carried, thrown between the two trees, and the front quarter taken off, cut off. Hmm. I, I don't see that it. That camera was on them all the time. Okay. Well, the black you mist. Don't see the leg back there? No. Well, let me enlarge it some okay. more. Okay. Who is that? That's a person standing there, right? It looks like somebody in a beige jacket. No, there's no person there. That's no. Oh no, you're in the wrong one. That's the only two I that's have. The wrong that's um, yeah, the black, the black mist one. Yeah, that's um. I'm talking. It's four, four and five. I'm talking about this. Are you talking about the one in yeah, the trees? Five. Okay, so you're talking about picture the green five, trees. Yeah, the one with the trees. Picture five. Oh, okay, that's green trees. All right. Green right. trees. Okay. Okay, I have it enlarged. Well, okay, we'll talk about the other one in a 
the center. Okay, so I have that one enlarged. Where would I see something beigey going across the tree? Is that a deer leg? A deer leg is right in the center, yes. Okay, got it. Okay. And that's, that's the is between those two trees where the front quarter was cut off and taken away. Okay. Wow. And in this case, a black mist came. Yeah, I see that. And that black, this particular time, that black mist stayed for about 20 minutes. So this is on your camera. So this is on the game, game, game camera. And it was so I know candles camera show movement. It, it wasn't the creature, was it? That black mist? You mean the black mist? Yeah, was it a cre the creature maybe? <laughs> I, I don't know that. I, oh. I mean, it looked it, it, it's a black mist and it stayed there and then it just dissipated in about 10 seconds. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Okay. That deer is right there, and that deer was carried away nine days later after it was all maggoty. And it was carried right in front of that game camera, which was working, and there was no picture of it being carried by that right in front of that game camera. Wow. Okay. All right, now what about the, the other one? Um, were that person okay. Uh, okay the other one the other the one was it's me that's me in the pic okay this, I'll set that storm okay this almost every deer a mist would come I mean it's it's I use the word paranormal mist because it's it's not there I'm in that picture and that was a bright clear day and that mm -hmm. happened several times when I would be in front of the camera I would be close, and I, you can't. I could not see any mist, but the camera would see the mist. Pick it up, yeah. And in this, in this, in this case, the smell was there that day. And actually, Linda Godfrey was with me that day. And I got out of the truck, and I said, "Linda, the smell is here." I walk over, and, and there was a deer. I walk over and see if the deer smelled like this dog urine skunk smell. It's a really bad, strong, I don't even know how to describe this smell. Dog urine, skunk urine, it's been in the sun for three or four days. Damn. But, um, it's bad. But I walked over to the deer and I said, nope, the deer does not smell. This was in, I think, October, November. And so then we, I, I took out the SD card and we got in the truck. And, and that we're looking at the pictures. And at 10 o'clock in the morning, this mist came. And then we're going along looking at the pictures, and then it's coming to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I go, Linda, the mist is still here at, at when we got here. Now, I walked up to that deer in a bright, clear day, and half of my body has been cloaked mm. by that uh, mm. paranormal mist, unknown yeah. mist. But that was a bright, clear day. There was absolutely no mist at all. It was a, a bright, clear fall. Yeah, I, we can see the blue sky through the trees. Yeah. Wow. And here the bottom part of my body is gone. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, there's a mist there. Oh, wow. But, there, but, there's, no, but there's no mist there. there it, it, it's a cloaking type mist. Yeah. The same, the same with that black mist. When that yeah. deer was being mutilated yeah. and moved and carried away, that black mist was there. And that happened on almost every deer. Or the camera would almost be like it was shut off. The deer would be there. An hour, an hour and a half later, the deer is totally gone. 150, 120, 150 pound deer, totally gone. And the next picture, the deer is gone. And the camera took no, did not take any pictures during that process is being picked up and carried away. So those two concepts occurred about 20 times with the 20 deer. 
Well, that picture with the green tree and the deer, you can see in the left-hand corner, it's sunny in that corner. If that mist hadn't been there, I believe that that whole picture would have been a lot brighter with sun coming through. But now, Are we talking about the black mist? The yeah, black yeah, mist? yeah. I'm sure that was yeah, a, oh, that the sun, if yes. that black mist was hiding the sun coming into that area, because you could see the sun on the left hand on the left hand corner. Yes. Damn. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so let me let me get rid of that picture. Um. Okay, so. Uh, I couldn't find any reports of any humans being harmed by this man wolf except being frightened. Um, and it seems like really that this this um, this werewolf, dog man, man wolf, whatever, he seems like a, he's a hunter and a scavenger. Uh, what do you think? I don't think he's a hunter. I, I had one deer that was killed on my property in 2022. And could it have been a deer that was shot with a bow and arrow and then, you know, and then got over my property? But, I mean, I, I, it, 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 it's, it was the only deer that I've ever had killed on my property. The other ones were all roadkill deer that I put out, which would make it a scavenger. But he doesn't eat them. He carries it away. He, he, he doesn't. It's not like it's eaten. It's always like, like it's been cut off and quartered or, you know, or, or just a whole deer picked up and carried away. Okay. So it, it, it's, well, I'm not sure it eats. I, it, I never saw any evidence that, but I would see the deer being eaten. I looked at my camera and I knew it was okay. That's coyote because you can see the the chew marks and the mm -hmm. teeth marks. And I would have pictures of of coyotes on my camera of them eating the, the usually the rump of the deer or the intestine. They would eat that because that's got the most nutrients. And and there would be you know it would look like it was being chewed on. If I would come to my deer, remember twenty of twenty of killed deer were put out. If I come to the deer and the, the head is cut off, what's happened, mm -hmm. or the front quarter is gone, or a variety of other things like that it appears to be cut and not chewed, then I would either have a mist on my camera or just nothing. No pictures during that process. The deer would be there, then the quarter or the, the head would be gone. Well, and then the next picture it was gone. So it'd be like an hour, two hours, three hours later. There are animals that hunt food to eat, but they don't eat it there on the spot. They take it with them, they carry it with them, and they eat it elsewhere. Now he's staying somewhere. He's hiding somewhere within your, your property, somebody else's property. Have you ever tried to search where maybe possibly he could be hiding or have a place that he's staying? Or, um, have you have you investigated your property, press other property, the surrounding properties? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Well, first of all, that would be a natural animal, and he has done. I shouldn't say he. It. It has, like I said, it has been walking along in snow, and suddenly the tracks will stop, or in the middle of my field, the tracks will start. And a natural animal cannot do that. So a natural animal may need a place to stay. A supernatural animal or an animal that moves to another universe. Or I do have pictures of him materializing. Okay. Uh, those are unbelievable pictures. Then those he's he could be interdimensional. A uh, materializing. He could be interdimensional. Yes. Yeah, he has. Well. He has to be because... He can't be walking across my field and suddenly the tracks stop. We can look at the snow tracks. Oh yeah, okay, hold on. Um, the snow, snow prints, that's the one? Yeah, I got it, snow prints.
Okay, I got it. It's up. Okay, if you look at the first one. Okay, let me enlarge it. Two. Whoops. Okay, can you see the first one where there's two track lines coming into my field? Okay, hold on. Shoot. There you go. Okay. Oh. Hmm. It's not letting me enlarge it for some reason. Okay, here we go. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I've got them here. Yeah. Go ahead. You, you see the two track lines coming into my field? Yeah. In the snow. Yeah. Okay, one's coming directly at the camera. And I took these pictures. These pictures were taken with my smartphone. What? 2015. Okay. Now, there are very identified in snow from coyote or deer tracks. Coyote tracks, of course, have, have uh, you know, there's four legs and they have about a 12 inch step or less than that, a six to eight inch step. And of course, deer tracks have a hooked uh, track. So, so that's very identifiable. These tracks are always two to four feet apart and they're in a very straight line, no straddle. He walks, it walks like a model and there is no drag marks. That's important. A coyote or a deer have drag marks where they drag, especially when the deep snow is as deep six inches. That's... And you can see that these these prints are. He directly puts his foot. She it directly puts his foot in. That is crazy. Yes. There's no, there's no drag marks. Oh my God! One foot in front of the other. That's yes. weird. There's no stra very little straddle. So it cannot be four-legged. It's, it's a bipedal animal walking in that snow. Oh, my God. Uh, and they're deep. He must be heavy because they're pretty deep. Oh, he, he, he's, he's well, I've, I've seen him, and he's, he's, he's huge. Huh? Yeah, he's six and a half to seven feet tall. Yeah, yeah. He's heavy, yes. Well, you know what's weird? This Not one picture... Uh, in the straight line, and there's bushes like in the back. It's, I think somebody else might have been with them, and then the footprints don't complete. They stop a quarter of the way. So you have one long line of footprints next to it, another line of footprints, but it only a quarter of the way. What's that? Okay, I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at. Um, are you looking at that same picture, the first one? I, yeah, that I actually have three of them. The, the fourth one that, that you sent me, I already had. But this is the one where it's there's bushes with snow, and it comes all the way across one line. But actually, next to the beginning in the back, there's another set of footprints, but it only goes a quarter of the way, and then it stops unless the camera didn't pick it, pick it up. But it looks yeah, like there was I, I two think, of them. I think there was case, two of they them. Both, they both come, yeah. But but the one coming directly at the camera, now do you have... I have the one that it, it turns. Where it took, yeah. It, 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 it takes a right, a right, yes, a right how, angle corner. That is strange. Can you zoom in on that? Yeah, I have it zoomed in. Zoom in on in. that right yeah. angle corner. Yeah, that is weird. Okay, that the one coming towards the camera did that, and I've seen that uh, right angle corner four or five times in the snow, and so that has to be a four-legged animal cannot make a right angle corner like that without a lot of footprints. Look so at that's absolute proof that it's a bipedal animal walking there. Wow. That's crazy. It makes uh, a ninety degree corner. You can't you can't have a coyote or a dog or a deer make a ninety degree a ninety degree corner no. without many many other footsteps. So that, that that's that the one did that. Now, if you look at the tape measure one, yeah, let me go down. Okay, I'm gonna have to bring it in a little. Let me bring it in a little. 
Okay, got it. Okay. Look and at the, the stride. One, the, second, the second set of footprints that came in my field, oh. he went directly across my field. And oh. 48 inch steps. Look at that. For a quarter mile. Uh, how the... And if you look at the, the last picture, you'll see the track line going all the way across my field. Yeah. What's the measurements between the foot? Forty-eight inches, four feet. Oh my God! The thing that that thing must be huge or big, long legs. Uh, yes. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh my God! That's crazy. That's proof. Tracks are facts. That's absolute proof that there's a bipedal, very large creature on my farm. In Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Oh, oh my God! When was this picture taken? 2015. Um, I think Linda. So did did you show this to Linda Godfrey? Uh, yeah, she saw these. What did she say about it? Oh my God! Because <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, she's she is the well known investigator of Bray Road. Now I know she, she was at my farm many times. I, well, you guys, from what I understand, uh, you were doing experiments. What kind of experiments were you conducting? She never really conducted any experiments with it. I gave her data or told her data from my experiments. Oh. She, she never, she just, she was a reporter and, um, you know, she was interested in the experiments which I was doing and, you know, the deer and, I mean, many experiments. I, I put out, you know, <laughs> trinkets and lots of lots of experiments. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so, Lee, were you ever frightened of this creature? Did it frighten you? Uh, I, I mean. Okay, I'll tell you about the second time I saw the creature, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. So, May 11th of 2021, at 3.30 in the afternoon, I pulled back, I went to the, my west end of my field, which is the closest to Bray Road. And I was going to pick up some SD cards from some of my cameras. In that process, I, I pulled up and parked, and I looked into the neighbor's field directly west of my farm toward Bray Road, and that was a bean field that started to grow beans. And out in the field, I saw a black, uh, saw a black object, tall, you know, like four or five feet tall. I knew right away it was not a bear. I knew right away it was not a person. I knew right away it was a coyote deer. So I started taking pictures with my iPhone 11. Now he was a quarter a quarter mile away. So I started taking pictures with my iPhone 11, zooming in as best I could. I did not take video because video has eight megapixels on my iPhone 11, and the uh, picture, the photo, is 20 megapixels. And I wanted to get as clear as picture as I could. So I started taking pictures. In that process, he stood up started walking toward the woods, and I have this all in my pictures. Then he dropped down on all fours before going into the woods, and when he dropped down on all fours, then he went into the woods. And that's what I saw, and that's what the pictures that I had taken show. So do you think he, he, so then he crawled like a dog going into the woods? Yeah, he, I've been tracking him, tracking it, it I should say, yes. Because uh, I think there's females there, but I'm tracking it. Uh, and many, sometimes he they, he will go down to all four for a little bit, and it, it is, his front arms, feet, claws, where you want to call them, are much different than, than the back. That those are hands. Wow, that no. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, do you have so, any images of the of the for of the, the legs being on into the snow all four do you have any of those did you capture any of those oh yeah but yeah sure 
Oh, I would love to have seen that. Well, I, I have a, I have a hundred thousand. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. But in, in that, in this process, you asked me if I ever was scared. So I saw the creature. I knew it was the creature, the beast. I called my brother Fred, and I said, I said, okay. I sent him the pictures that I had taken with my iPhone. And and I said, okay, here's the picture. I just saw it, and I want to walk over there and look for tracks. And I said, okay, I want to keep talking to you. you know, keep talking to me. If this thing comes out, if the beast comes out, just call the coroner, and I'll be Wisconsin folklore. You know? <laughs> yes, I was very nervous going over towards that woods to see if what tracks were there and I kept talking to Fred I kept talking to the beast okay if you're there come on out let's have some tea you know I know you're there I just saw you go in the woods you know and uh, you know and, and I walked over that quarter mile uh, cautiously nervously yes and there were right in the area where I'd seen it there were the five toed seven pad tracks were right there. So that's the second time that I saw it and immediately found tracks, you know, in that area of the five toed seven pad track. Which there's no animal in the world, no canid animal, no feline either. There might be a feline up in uh, the mountains of uh, uh, Nepal or something. I heard there's one up there in Nepal. But no, no five-toed, seven-pad cane in the track. And here, I saw the creature, I saw it, and there were the tracks right there to prove that. Do you live on this farm every day, or do you live elsewhere? No. I live 35 miles away in Wakanda, Illinois, and I farm that up there. I go up probably two days, two, twice a week to get hay for my wife. Now she has, uh, we have some horse and cows and sheep and goats and so I still bale hay there and I go up and pick up hay a couple days of work or go work on my four wheelers or my tractors or my snowmobiles that I have and I work on those you know, so I go up a couple days a week but your animals aren't on that farm they're elsewhere yes they are oh, okay yeah. good oh my goodness do you ever so, so you spend real, 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 okay real, go real, ahead just real, say, say your question okay so those pictures <laughs> that i took yeah i have a, a, a individual who was a cameraman in california now he's a cameraman in chicago i think he's still a cameraman but he, he he works in chicago and he volunteered to look at pictures so i told him that i had this picture on my iphone of the creature he said, oh, I have apps that will tell you how big it is. That, you know, they'll, it'll check the focal length. They'll take all the, the account with how the picture was taken, and it'll tell you how big the, the creature, how, how big the creature is. So I sent him to him, and he sent me back. He said the app says the creature, the, that figure is six and a half to seven feet tall, and the shoulders are three to three and a half feet wide. And that corresponds with what I was looking at too. I knew it was huge. Oh my God. Oh. oh wow. That's crazy. Do you ever so you spend two at least two days a week on this farm. You sleep two. overnight and you stay there for two days a week. I, I don't sleep there too much. I have a, a room in my I have a hundred uh, sixty by hundred and twenty foot uh, pole barn. I have a room in there, it's a bedroom TV and stuff, and I stay sometimes if I need something to do the next day, if I'm going to you know, work overnight, but otherwise I just go up and pick up hay, or baling hay, I, I stay there for mm. some time, but not, you know, not, you know, so not, not often, there. You know, Oh, yeah, you know, if you live there, you, you have more, um, more visits. Do you, when you are there, do you ever get the feeling you're being watched? Yeah. Really? Yeah. If I'm out in my field, yeah, many times. Many times. You get that feeling, yes. Yeah. Does it make noise? Does it make noises? Oh, yeah. It howls and uh, grunts and, gro and growls and 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's made a lot of noises that, that, that aren't coyote noises, yes. Huh. So when Linda was with you, what did you guys do? I, you're, you're, um, I never saw that movie. Uh, I don't know if it's still available because that was a long time ago. Um, but I know you're in her book. Um, how many, so she came onto your property. How long was she on your property? Well, most of the time it was a relatively short visit. Uh, we had some uh, lookouts at night, probably for a couple hours. Uh, the one lookout, um, her and I and another gentleman, we were in the, the car and and suddenly this orb, like the size of a basketball, and we can see this one. And I have hundreds, probably 100, 150 videos of orbs the size of basketball, soccer balls, uh, with my infrared night vision camera. But this particular time, uh, we were sitting in the car and this orb came out of the woods to my west of the west and then came all the way across to, towards our car. And the gentleman, we had a spotlight to, to, he had a spotlight to look for deer or just to look around. And he flashed, he, 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 he lit it up and aimed it at the, at the orb, which is probably 50 feet away, 50 feet up in the air. And the orb just like went squeakily and dis, just dissipated. Mm. And so, so that would have been something that, that was in 2016. That would have, uh, you know, Linda was there for that, and so some lookouts. But most of the time, she would just come and look at my pictures or look at, you know, uh, some of the evidence that I had, where, you know, deer be carried into my field and the, the grass is all knocked down and a <clears throat> ten foot square area, and there's pine marks and the deer and whatever was carrying the deer are gone. There's no tracks out of there. So I call Linda and I say. Come over here, see if you can find any track coming out of this area where the hay has been bent and knocked and you know crumpled down, and just to get another eyewitness. And then she would come over and you know and take pictures and have a second witness to, to some of the experiences that occurred on my farm. Wow. I have a picture of the hair. Where? How did you get this clump of hair? The clump of hair. I was uh, cutting hay, 2017, right in there. I, I, I would have that in my log book. But anyway, the clump of hair was uh, on a bush about two, two to three feet off the ground. Uh, and I saw it, I, I was cutting hay with my tractor and hay vine. And I looked over and I saw this hair waving on this uh, bush. And so I then went up and I got a, I didn't want to touch it, you know, and I went up and got a, a baggie and and some tongs and I, I put the hair into a baggie. So uh, that's how the hair was secured and and it's it's long hair. You have the picture there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did, was any and testing the, done on it? And there's some, and there's some white hair there too. Oh, let's see. Right? Uh, let me enlarge it. Whoops. There's some long brown hair, and then there's some white hair, I think, on the bottom. There should be. If you, I can't see the picture, so. Um, there's a stick. There's a couple of sticks in it. Uh, yeah, that's I... actually that's actually debris. That's a, those are uh, plant. Um, yeah, it, was, it had a lot of debris in it. I see. Those are, those are pieces. Those are pieces of, uh, of of weeds. Yeah, yeah. There. You don't see any white at the bottom. Uh, no. Is it in a baggie? Is it in a baggie? No, it's it, it's no, I know because the um, the sticks are there in between the. Um, and there's something uh, yellowish in the middle. I think that's another piece of debris that's in that hair. It's a light brown. I mean, it's a medium brown. It's not yeah, real brown. dark. There should be some, if you, maybe, maybe you don't have a clear picture, but there was also some white hair there too. Um, I, up I, in uh, the... I, yeah, I can't see it. 
see the picture, but um, I bought a microscopic uh, camera uh -huh. and I took pictures of that. I did call the uh, University of Wisconsin Madison and talk to them about it, uh -huh. and they and they said the only thing they do is the DNA is uh, it costs two thousand dollars too. Is they would if I would have hair from a cougar or a bear, they would then would uh, test the DNA to see if a cougar, like a cougar, came from uh -huh. from the Dakotas and that type of thing. And I said, well, this is the hair of a beast of Bray Road. And then she laughed and that was the end of the conversation. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that, yeah, that was, so <laughs> I had a microscopic, uh, I bought a microscopic camera. <laughs> And took pictures of it, and I sent them to a to a um, gentleman in Minnesota who mm -hmm. was a hair specialist, and he only charged me fifty bucks. I don't remember some amount of money, but anyway, he sent back, and he said he didn't think it was hair. He didn't think it was hair. Yeah, because it has no medulla, it has no sheath. Right. Yeah. He was, what? So what is it? Uh, uh, he, he he says unknown, and he didn't think it was even hair. Oh wow! No kidding. That it sure looks yeah, like that, hair. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, yes, it does. Yeah, it's hair. Yeah. Oh it's, my it's, god! Well, it's hair from an unknown creature. Which, which, again, now, you know, it's a. Hair from a beast of Bray Road is it a natural animal or a supernatural animal? Right. You know that question becomes blurry. Um, I know we have this enlargement. Was it that? What? How much hair was it? Was it, it? Because in the picture, it looks like it was a big clump of hair. Was it very much? That's a. I mean, it's adequate. It's a clump of hair. Yeah. Uh, how so? This was left behind in the bushes. Was that the only time you found this hair? Um, no. Uh, I, I found hair again another time on some tape that was on a camera, and when that tape was pe peeled off. It was holding an audio, audio audio device, and that tape was peeled off from the camera. Was it was on the camera with? Uh, and actually, my accomplice found that here. I have a, I have a gentleman that's been working with me for the last four years just to try and you know bounce ideas off of it. My brother Fred. But um, the auditory audio device was taped on the camera with um, uh, the duct tape or or the gorilla tape. It was gorilla tape, and that was peeled off of the camera and thrown on the ground and there were hairs on that tape mm. damn oh wow you know uh, we have some other pictures um, oh the okay this one the creature in front of the camera I have okay. those yeah, that, yeah okay okay number seven I've got all three up Okay, number, that's picture number seven, right? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Three, three picks, seven, yes. Okay, <clears throat> okay, I have, I, I can see it. I have it here now. Okay, the camera, again, I've had cameras on these deer. I have pictures of it far, far away, as you did in your promo. Quarter mile, I have pictures of it very close to the camera. This particular camera was five feet off the ground. And I had the camera set, so if it got triggered, it took three pictures at one and was in one second. Right. And that's a common way I set the camera, the game cameras. They get triggered, they go boom, boom, boom. It takes three pictures in one second. And that's how this camera was positioned. That oh. camera is five feet off the ground. And if you look at that figure, you can see hair on the figure. Okay. <clears throat> and if you look at the third one, you can, I think that's a pectoral muscle. So that creature, that figure in front of the camera, 
chest is about five feet off the ground, which would make this creature or that figure six and a half to seven feet tall, which is what is common uh, for other people that have seen it to say how big it is. And the same with with uh, what that computer app said for the pictures that I have. Yeah. So it is 7.30 in the morning. Now, nobody knows where my cameras are at. People say, oh, it's somebody in a, in a gorilla suit or somebody in a ghillie suit. First of all, they cost $5,000. No farmer is going to buy a ghillie suit for $5,000 and try and go out and play a game. You know, they're just, they're, they're, This is not even feasible for anybody. It's my property. You can't get here unless you come onto my property or come from Bray Road and that's through a very, very heavy, thick, black, you know, blackberry bush infested woods that you cannot walk through. So nobody can get to this area. Wow. Yes, and the hay wow. looks like the hay. This was in May, Without, so the hay fields were real low then. Yeah, the hay fields are starting to grow. But so this is not somebody in a ghillie suit, ghillie suit for sure. Wow. And. And nobody, nobody knows where my cameras are at. So I move them constantly. So I would have, if somebody was trying to play a hoax on me all this time yeah. for ten years, yeah, I would have dozens and dozens and dozens of pictures of it, you know, in front of the camera, and I don't. So that is, <clears throat> I think that is the creature. Well, it is. Yeah. There's nothing else. Not a deer, coyote. There's no bear there. No. And so, and plus this. I mean, you know, bear can stand up for a while, but they they waddle. They they leave a, they have a big straddle when they walk as as two legged. So, um, but that is a close up, and, and and I have several of these, quite a few of these. Of, he's close to the camera like that, and you can see the hair. God. All right. So we have another picture. What about? All right, this one is, uh, oh, we didn't talk, okay. The UFOs, eight and nine. Eight and nine? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I have, I have, oh, my UFO pictures are, I, I, I'm, just, I'm saving those, but I, I, I sent this one to you. Because this is a really cool UFO. Uh, these are taken with my game camera. And that UFO I triggered the camera twice. Now, it... The camera should not have been triggered. It should only be triggered at, uh, you know, 75 feet away by heat and motion. But I get thousands and thousands of what they call false triggers, uh, thousands of them. So this camera took this picture of of the of this UFO, and it flew then in front of the, the, the picture that flew in front of the tree, and then flew away again. So I have. It was triggered twice, and this is just one of the pictures that was taken of the six pictures that was taken by my camera. All right, so I did. It, 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 it's it's a UFO. It's flying. It's, it's this shape. It's, uh, it's it's and I have like I say I have many pictures of you other UFOs too, and it's on my property. That's right over my that 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 tree is on my property, and you can zoom in on it. I did and. It's not, it's not, this one isn't real big probably, but it flies in front of the tree, it's probably about six to eight feet. But wow. it flies in front of the tree, it's not a weather balloon. Wow, it's, that's it's a flying, crazy. a flying uh, uh, UFO or UAP or whatever uh, on my property. And I, again, I have many pictures of UFOs. Yeah, it, it snapped the picture when it started coming, and then the clo it came even closer. I have I enlarged that. Uh, remember, I told you I couldn't see it, so I went into my Photoshop and I I enlarged it so you can see that it's coming. And then the second mm -hmm. picture where it's it's bigger, the image is bigger. So I have that. Yeah, it's good. Wow. Are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Bill, Lee, can you hear me? No, you came back now. Oh, okay. Um, All right, anyway, that's a good, because I enlarged uh, it. I enlarged it, Lee, so everybody can see it. Uh, where it took the picture, okay. where it started to come in, and then it finally snapped. 
Now, what about the, um, okay, now, what about this one? The orbs and light shaft. What's that all about? Okay, number 10. Okay, the first one is a light shaft. I have thousands of, a thousand pictures of light shafts on my property. There's no electrical lines anywhere near. This is in the back part of the property, a half mile from Bowers Road and a quarter mile from Bray Road. Our electrical power, you know, rural power lines on those roads, but I have no electricity back in my property. But yet I get these shafts of light. And the first one you can see is just a shaft of light coming from where? What's the source? I have thousand pictures of lights like shafts of light like this. And and it just it just it has no source. It cannot I mean there's no nothing out there and that could create a light like this other than something supernatural or a UFO. Now the other thing about the light shaft and my the, the, the cameraman guy says that that is has to be the only way we could create a light shaft like that is with laser because the sides are parallel. He said any light that traveled that far when he looks at the picture coming from you know from out from the sky would have a cone shape to it. This has parallel sides. It actually go that one goes in a little bit, but it, it, most of them have parallel sides. And he said you don't you can't have a, a regular light source other than a laser that would have parallel sides like that. And he said, we don't have lasers that huge. He said, that's like two foot across. Wow. Let's see if there's a date. Yeah, this was taken August 29th, 2020. Mm -hmm. oh, I, oh. I, I get them almost monthly. Yeah, well, the, well the, the shaft was August, and the um, orb with the trees in the shaft um, was April. Of what year? 2020. So both of these were... Also. Yeah, yeah, they were both 2020, but one in April and one in August. But, but I, have, I have pictures from 2014. I have, pictures, I have a thousand pictures of these light shafts and orbs. God. Or more. I just sent you these two. Now, the second one, the reason I sent you that one is that within the light shaft, you can see that orb is actually moved. Though, if you zoom in on it, oh, wait a it's minute. actually moved. It. Uh, okay. It's actually moved a little bit. All right, wait a minute. So the one from April, it looks like there's trees and then the shaft. And you said that yes. there's something. All right, let me see. Um, there's something in it. Looks like a little egg. Looks like an egg-shaped object. But then where it's the an orb. yeah, and then where the trees are. Um, okay, so you said you could see men in it. No, no, there's no men. In oh, it, no. this that they. That light shaft is coming through the tree. He's unobstructed, which is crazy because it should be, you know, should be reflecting off the trees. But it's coming through the trees unobstructed, and it has that orb that you can see during the aperture opening moved within the light shaft. Wow! And the light shaft has a slight bend to it, which means that the orb has refracted the light shaft. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. All right, let me get rid of this one. Okay, we have one last picture. The a, uh, Easter egg um, UFOs. Oh, the Easter egg. That's <laughs> yeah. The, the Easter egg UFO. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, picture 11. Um, 11 and 12. Okay, picture 11, that, that camera I had to send back because it had a, a fault. I think it's a Moultrie camera. Yeah, it was a Moultrie camera. Yeah. But, it, it, but this Easter egg UFO 
four different cameras have captured this Easter egg UFO. Four different cameras. And if you zoom in on it, All right now, which one? The, okay, now which one? The turquoise, the turquoise one, 11. the or the green 11. with the t green trees, the green one with the green trees. The green trees, yeah. 11. Okay, hold on. Zoom, zoom in on the on the Easter egg UFO. Okay. All right, I'll do the green tree one. Okay. Oh, oh God! It looks exactly like an Easter egg. That's crazy. Oh my God! It yeah. looks like an Easter egg. It looks like hieroglyphics on it or something. Oh! Oh wow! Oh! Oh my goodness! Look at that! Well, it's transparent. It's transparent. Yes. Wow! That's crazy. No wonder you call it an Easter egg. No. <laughs> yeah. Every time that thing come, I mean, the four times I've had it on my camera, it has done crazy things to my camera. One time it changed the date from 20, what is the date on that? Oh, um, let's date? see, hold on. I, oh, I don't have it. I don't have the date on either okay. one of them. It's 20 something. Oh no, this one's some, <laughs> one, it starts with the one, so it's gotta be 19 something. Okay, maybe the date changed. This was actually in 2022, I think. But he changes the date on my camera, or that, when that thing would come, that egg, egg, UFO, egg UFO would come several times to change the date on my camera from like 2022 to 2018. And change it from like December 2022 to January 2018. Oh my God. That's crazy. And, and, and another time it came, it the camera went into nighttime mode. It dropped the IR filter, the infrared filter, and then when it does that, then the, the picture is pink colored. And this, it was taking pictures of the UFO, and then it went to nighttime mode, and it was three o'clock in the afternoon, oh. and bright sunny day, and. The camera thought it was nighttime for some reason and dropped the IR filter. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, so, okay, the, you're, these camera, the camera, honey, the camera lead that you have, um, it it works on movement. So if there's nothing there, so 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 this came and then it took this picture did it take a picture of it flying away or is this the only picture on that on that uh, oh well, it took pictures for about an hour and what else did you get besides it this didn't fly away. it didn't fly away did it move it moved yes yes well we'd like to see some of the sequence on that well <laughs> You need to come to my farm and I'll show you, <laughs> I'll show you a, a thousand pictures. Oh, that, you know, when you do this Easter egg, that would be interesting because I know you have all the shots from your camera uh, shots. And if you had, like, <clears throat> when it showed up, I mean, all of a sudden on the camera, did it just show up or did it come in from, from the sky area? And then it took the picture, but... After this one, what would the other pictures have been? Uh, that would have been interesting to see. Well, that, that, yeah, I have. It, uh, it never, well, if you look at the second picture, yeah. 12. All right, let me go. Let me go over there. Oh, that's also an egg, too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that, this is two of the cat. <clears throat> Let me get uh, some of, uh, let me hold on for a minute. Let me see if they can see that. Okay. All right, I just want to get this in so they can see it. All right, I think you guys can see that. Okay, I think, let me see. Yeah, they can see that. Yeah. Um, 
That's the same. It's the same thing. Right. It's a different camera. Yeah. Yeah. As they say, four different cameras have taken a picture of that egg UFO. Wow. But on a different. It's not. It's not. It's not a reflection. It's not a refraction from light. I mean, it's 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 an object there. Were these both taken on the same day, but with different cameras? No, these are months. Oh. Okay, different different times. Okay, so it keeps but coming. The well, the cameras are in a totally different location on my farm. Yeah. It's not. They're it's they're they're probably a quarter mile apart. I mean, the two cameras and they're months apart I would think can you see that you can't see the date on no the I didn't get the dates on them um, all okay. right but no, so so these fine. these were two different two different times yeah yeah okay. yeah four different cameras over a period of probably about a year I saw wow. I saw this egg. when was the last time you captured this on camera this Easter egg UFO Do you 2022. Know? 2022 was the last time you saw it. How so, many so. how many of these images have you gotten since you put your camera? Images? Out? Yeah, of the you of the Easter egg. Do, do you know about? Hundred. A hundred of them? Yeah, it took pictures. It took pictures. I mean, the four times it took pictures of this Easter egg. Yeah. But um, so, what does it do? It just shows up and then it disappears. Well, it just, it, it shows up, and now, it has some friends that come with it sometimes, like this one, the last one, there's a little, uh, I don't know what to call it, a little cloud-like thing flying around it. Oh, with the turquoise-colored one? The turquoise? No, it's, it's, a, it's white. Yeah, but it's the, 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 pic, pic, the picture's turquoise-blue. Yes, and that one. All right, so let me see. All right, well, let me see if I can enlarge this. No, I don't think you have it there. I don't know. There's clouds. You, you, you need the whole sequence of like thirty yeah. pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny because Buddy. what I say, hey, you know, Bill Lee, I see um, mist in this picture. There's the Easter egg in the sky, and then it's like misty underneath, and then the mist is coming down onto the trees. So there is mist on your field and into the trees. Correct. And I was going to say on this one, like I say, when that Easter egg comes, funny things happen. And you can see the clouds in the background. Yeah. But this time, it had it had a a flying a little flying friend with it that flew around it. And it also that mist uh, was there, and it, it it came and went, or it fluctuated in the trees. You can see it's covering up the trees. Yes, there was a that's right over the trees, and there was a mist below that Easter egg. Yes. Yeah, you can see the mist, and when I blew it up, you could see the mist clearly see the mist um, uh, down through the trees and on on the grass as well because the camera was there, so the the mist was right there. Well, the same thing with the green one, the other one. There's it, when I put it back to normal, it's misty. It, well, I don't know if that's mist or that that particular camera had a fault in it, so. Oh. That's hard to tell if that's missed or the because that circle yeah. was in every picture it took. So I sent the, that okay. back to Moultrie and they sent me a new one. So I, I, that one, I, I'm not sure if that would be a missed or if that was the camera phone. Oh, okay. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't specify on that one. Wow. The other one definitely is a miss. Wow, those are some pictures. Uh, so you check, when was the last, so the last time that you, what was the last time you, are you there now? No, I'm at my home in Wakanda, Illinois. Okay. The last time that you visited your hay farm, were there any images on it, on the cameras? I'm sorry, what? Were there any, the last time you visited your farm, where were there any images on it? Any new images? I, I picked up, well, I, I was there today. I picked up hay and I was there today doing experiments with... EMF and with uh, magnetism and with with my with compasses. I was doing experiments today. There, I picked up 
uh, two SD cards. Uh, the one SD card, I have so many electronic um, faults or interferences, and the, the one card I picked up today was corrupted. And that happens, I mean, and I, I've taken, you know, every, you know, often, I've taken the camera, you know, to a, a camera specialist, and I've taken the SD card, and he said, well, yeah, it's corrupted. I said, well, what would corrupt? He said, well, that happens now and then, but it happens often. So today I picked up the SD card, and the one was corrupted, so it didn't have any pictures on it. It had been out there for two, three weeks. There weren't any pictures. I picked up the other SD card on my spy point camera. I had uh, thousand some pictures, so I had 500 triggers in four days. I had 500 triggers in four days, and there was absolutely nothing other than my field in the trigger. So it was constantly being triggered by an unknown force. With no, unknown no image. Concept. And, and no, it, wow. So those are the two things that occurred today. Both of them extremely electronic interference um, occurred. I did not have any pictures of any lights today because I, well, the one camera didn't have any pictures of what's corrupted. That's because it's corrupted. And that, wow. you know, it, I know, understand that can happen, but it happens often with my cameras. Wow. Hey, I wanted to ask you a question. When you've been there and stayed on your farm uh, and with the snow, um, and you have, and, and then the next morning you get up, have you seen any of those um, footprints near your home? Or your barn that you're in? Near, near, near my barn? Yeah. Only one time. Only one time. So it came up to your house? Came up to my barn. Came and it actually uh, brushed some snow off of one of my wagons. I, oh, when it walked by. It, well, it took its hand and brushed some snow off. Oh. Walked over to my hay wagon, brushed some snow off, and walked away. Oh, my goodness. And no body, there has never been a body found, ever, of this no, brain no. You, don't, you don't find it. Yeah. Well, I was you just asking. No, you're you not going to find it. If it's interdimensional, you're not going to find it. Um, you, don't, you don't find a coyote body. You're never, you know, that, that, that concept is, I, I mean, that's extremely unusual to find anybody of a, other than a, a, a deer that maybe has been consumed, you know, but. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, just no, asking. No, no, no. I'm not surprised. God, this... No, I don't know. It's natural and supernatural, so does it go to another dimension? I, I think so. Well, there's been sightings way back in... I mean, the Indians knew about it in the 1800s. They have caves with uh, um, the uh, drawings in the caves of it. and um, I mean, it's... It's been around forever. This this uh, dog man, wolf man, whatever it is, and the Native Americans they knew about it. Wow. Oh God, what a story! Gosh, and you and and but I just why you know why you why your why your hay farm the UFOs and 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 the the wolf man or werewolf whatever it is. Why you? I, 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 is it attracted to you somehow, or are you? What's? What do you think? What do you? Th what do you think they're doing this to you for? I mean, uh, uh, unless uh, unless the other people have it as well, but they just don't have the cameras, and you have them. And I believe that. Um, I. I mean, I. The, the property was, you know, it, uh, purchased to bale hay on, to make hay on, but. Once I started, you know, once I heard the story and I started putting out uh, roadkill raccoons and very, very strange things started happening to them, I started putting out cameras. Like I said, I've, I've had one to five cameras out since uh, October of 2013. I did not tell any of my neighbors uh, about the cameras. Nobody knew I had cameras out until 2016. And my one neighbor, she had asked me if, if she, you know, she said I always walked, you know, I, I purchased the property from a family that had had it for 60 years. 
uh, a married couple had purchased it when they were 20, and they were in their 80s, and that's who I purchased the property from, from, from 35 acres from them. And when I, so 2016, I told that lady that I said, you know, I have some pictures of a very large creature on my property. And she said, oh, she said the beast is out there. And she knew all about it. Wow. And I said, well, you know, I said, I, I, I have pictures. She said, well, yeah. She said, well, if my dog doesn't go, I don't go. So, you know, the dog at the time didn't go. So she, she didn't walk out there then. So she felt safe because the dog was giving her that indication. Well, when the lady who had owned the property, she was in her 80s, found out that I was had cameras out, then she came out of her garage or a couple days later. Uh, she came out of her garage with her lawn tractor and she drove over to my farm, which is relatively close. She has had to come across her lawn and some of my farm. And she drove into my barn and she said, Lee, I just want to tell you, when you go out there at night, be careful. Mm. And then she drove away, went back to her house. So there's knowledge of, of what's out there. Yes, there's knowledge. But nobody has taken any type of a, a study of it you know, like I have. That... Oh, is anybody else helping you um, gather information and um, yes. you're, I, you're getting help from other years, people? About five years ago, a gentleman became very arrested, who I had taught, he's in his 40s, and he became very arrested, and he's been working with me the last five years. And I have, uh, he has two cameras out right now. And his experiences with his cameras which I have not touched and I don't look at the SD card his experiences with his, with his cameras are very similar to mine he has got orbs, he has got lights, he has gotten strange objects, he's got UFOs so the cameras, his cameras have, have uh, been and that's a controlled study that's why we did it and his cameras have recorded the same type of data that my cameras have. Wow, they should do a documentary on your property. Has anybody come out and approached you about doing a documentary on your property? Well, Expedition X was here, they did one, and then Travel Channel has done three. But no, I, I um, no, I, I would, I would, I mean, a documentary, um, I mean, the Small Town Monsters, they did that. Uh, I guess a documentary would would have some advantage, uh, but I I'm not sure uh, how you could cover it all. I would need you know ten hours uh, to feel comfortable in covering it in detail, which I would like to cover it in. I would like to do an excellent job if somebody's interested, and uh, if it would show on TV, it'd be fine. If not, that's fine too but um, I have not no, nobody has approached me that. oh that's too bad you've got all those pictures and especially with these UFOs um, appearing at your property you know why UFOs you know that's really something wow what a story thanks so much Lee uh, for sharing uh, your story with us and the great pictures that you sent me to share with the viewers um, I'm sure everybody loved your story um, you, you're not going to write a book huh do you have you written a book I, I've, uh, I have a, a gentleman attempting to write a book and he, he is uh, he's, he's edited books and he's, he's very accomplished and it, it, he has worked, tried to work with other individuals and give them data. Uh, he, wow, he said it's just, it's just overwhelming. He said we would need volumes and volumes to cover it. So yeah. uh, there, there is an effort for that. But uh, he, you know, I, I call my what I do observational physics, and I record the data, and I do experiments, and, and keep a log, and I have. Uh, albums and I have you know, many pictures in my computer and I have albums of hard copies 
you know, and just recording data and uh, study, and, and someday, hopefully, I find an answer. Do you um, do you have audio recordings of their noises that they make? Yes. <gasps> you do? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to have heard them. Oh. Uh, they're very difficult to to uh, to. I mean, I'll have them. It's supposed to record, you know, when it hears, but it, it would record for an hour at a time, and um, it's, it's it's and then there would be sounds in there. It's very difficult to, to get out. Oh. You know, very difficult to uh, to uh, retrieve. Um, when you're there on your property and you're sleeping overnight, have you ever heard any sounds outside or maybe knocking on the wall or maybe something thrown at your, your, your house or sticks? Uh, uh, yeah, rocks thrown on the roof. And uh -huh. my, my, my son has stayed there and my godson, and they've had thrown the roof and I've had rocks hit the side of, of the wall when I've been in there. Uh-huh. A uh, hand slap on the door. Oh my God! It sounds it has characteristics of Bigfoot. I don't know. It, it plays games. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it has characteristics of Bigfoot. Wow. Okay. But it's not, I know we know it's not Bigfoot. Oh, my goodness. Well, see, especially, too, I mean, with the UFOs, that's really, wow. Oh, what a great story. That's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Lee, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I really appreciate it. You're a great guest. Love your story, and I, I really hope it goes somewhere. I mean, with all the evidence that you have, you're probably one of the most uh, uh, people out there with your the experience that you have with all this documentation. You probably have more than anybody has ever gathered on on one of these uh, uh, monsters, and you have it all. That's fabulous. I hope well, it goes somewhere. I really do. People come and see it, and they say, Skinwalker Ranch doesn't have this. And I go, oh, and then, I, well, I... I think I have more, yes. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You, well, you do. You, have, you do. Gee, well, again, Lee, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I really enjoyed your story. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Well, you're very welcome. It's been very enjoyable talking with you. Oh, thank uh, it's been a very enjoyable interview. I've enjoyed it a great deal. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Lee. Good night, honey. Thank you so much. Good night. Good, good, My best good wishes night. to care. you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. What a sweet man. Isn't he sweet? Oh my God, what a story. God, that's crazy. UFOs and and those orbs and the and the shaft lights. Oh gosh. Really crazy. Um, I, I really hope something happens. Uh, his, his, I mean, with all the evidence that he has, oh my God. It's so weird, huh? It's got to be interdimensional. Especially when, that really is suspicious when there's UFOs around. Because that happens with Bigfoot. And I've ne I, I haven't read too many stories about this wolf man, but... Throwing rocks and sticks, brushing off, like he said, the snow. That's very strange. And the way the feet, the way they walk, one foot in front of the other, not side by side. That's crazy. Well, I've never seen evidence like that before, so um, I really enjoyed that. Um, everybody, so let me... Um, Okay, so the last Thursday, I guess it's the 29th of this month, uh, Drew Beeson and uh, Serenity Jenny were going to talk about the um, Yuba, Yuba County Five. It's an, it's an unsolved case. It will never be solved. Never. So we want to know. I've done several shows on it. Um, Drew wrote the book on it so we want to know if Serenity Jenny can pick up 
anything on this case. What happened to them? There was no reason for them to go off the road and go into Plumas National Park. There was absolutely no reason for them. They drove up to the National Park. They got stuck in the snow. They could have, that car was a full tank of gas. It, it didn't die. They could have gotten out of the car, pushed it out of the snow, and gone back and gotten back onto the road. But why didn't they? Why? And I'm dying to find out. I'm dying to find out. And one of them, I think it was Gary Mathias. There's something strange about that guy. They never found his body. And there's something strange. I, I, it's really strange. They haven't found his body, but I have a funny feeling about this guy. They made, I don't know, we'll talk about it on the 29th because Drew has all the, um, uh, all the information on, um, on that. He wrote the book, so he did the research. I just know from what I gather off the internet. Anyway, so that should be a really good show. I'm really looking forward to that. So everybody, I hope you had a great Valentine's yesterday. And um, have a great week, and I'll see you in a week on, on the, uh, the 29th for another show that I hope you enjoy. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. And for those, if you do like the show, if you would, would please um, subscribe to my channel. And also, if you guys would please give the show a like, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. There's 58 out there now watching. Would you please hit a like for the show? If you like the show, I, I'd appreciate that. So um, let me uh, let me do some shout outs. And um, let's see, let me go back up here. Okay, uh, we have Thayer <clears throat> Tallcross, my buddy from Scotland. Thank you for being here. I hope you're not tired and you stay up with us. It's been almost two hours. <laughs> Thank you, Tall Cross. Nuna B, King Huyuko, Lully Tubi. Oh, Lully, you, you stuck out tonight. You stayed with us. Uh, Chippa Terry, thank you, honey, my mod. Renee um, is out with her hubby on an outing. And so Chippa Terry is here with us tonight. Thank you, honey, for joining us. You know, your, your family comes first. I come second. So if you ever have something that you want to do with your family, please do it because I come second. And I, But I appreciate you being here. Uh, let's see who else wants a shout out. I am Alpha. I've heard about those red eyes before. Uh, Strange Katina. Uh, who else? There's there was fifty people right here. King of Huko Mundo. Uh, anybody else want to shout out? Sheila Pelican. Uh, Sheila, you the show starts at six, honey. We started six Pacific time. 8 Central and 9 Eastern. Uh, Max Brandt. Anybody else want to shout out before I, I close? Oh, Danny Rowling, Ghostface, <laughs> a werewolf. Well, it's called Werewolf, um, Dogman, um, uh, Wolfman, Man Wolf, because it walks on its hind legs. Super Britches, anybody else? Oh no, what happened? Oh, something happened, I can't get it. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, Davy Jones, anybody else want to shout out? Okay, please, please, you're still here. I know I can see how many are here. Please um, hit a like for the show. You're still here, so if you'd hit a like, I'd appreciate that too. Anybody, okay, I'm going to go. So everybody, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I, 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 Chip and Terry's from California. Renee's from uh, Australia, I think. 
and tall cross I know is my buddy from Scotland so um, I don't know where everybody else is from but oh Nicole Johnson but I really appreciate you coming to the shows um, super sad Jeanette I, I don't have super sad Jeanette I don't know how to pronounce that I'm really sorry Diane Bayacardi New Zealand I keep forgetting that Terry. okay hello Nicole okay I'm gonna go now guys okay like remember I love you and I appreciate you being here with me uh, every other week when I have the shows um, I was trying to get a f my buddy uh, he used to be a paranormal investigator on my team and I was trying to get him to uh, get uh, some apps so on Sundays we could do um, ghost box sessions but I haven't heard from him and I know he's busy. He has his, a paranormal team of his own and I know he does investigating, but I was hoping that he would get his act together and uh, we could do ghost box sessions on Sundays. Um, I was looking forward to that, but we'll see what happens. All right, guys, I'm going to go. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. You have no idea how much I appreciate you all. And, um, oh, super cyanet. Super Cyan Yet. You're asking the wrong person to, for me to, to pronounce something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Super. I'm just going to call you Super. <laughs> okay, out, everybody. Good night. Love you. Thank you. Good night.